Hi guys, Heather here from Sprout. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of information on the equestrian sport of eventing. So eventing is recognized as an Olympic sport and uh, practiced across many countries. They're best described as the triathlon for horses. So it involves a couple different elements to the competitions. So it's made up of three phases. The first phase is dressage, and dressage shows the graceful partnership of the rider and the horse throughout a sequence of flat movements. So this is what looks like dancing with the horses. Um, the next phase is gonna be a cross country phase. Cross country phase is a phase that you see where horses are galloping through fields and jumping over big, um, solid obstacles. So this tests the horse's bravery and fitness and determination as well as the combination of horse and rider working together. So it's a series of solid obstacles with lots of technical questions on various terrain. The last component of eventing is a show jumping or stadium jumping portion. So the stadium jumping portion tests precision and accuracy over about 10 to 20 fences in within an arena. So the same riders and horses, same rider and horse combination competes through all three phases and they accumulate penalty points for each phase. And at the end of the event, the pair with the lowest score wins. So you have to have a really good partnership with your horse and you have to have a really good connection. You have to be very uh, intuitive with your, your riding throughout the entire competition. With the complex nature of eventing, it does have a very high demand on the horses. And because of this, at the higher levels, they do incorporate what is called a jog. And the jogs include basically veterinarians that are examining each horse to check for soundness and health before they show and continue showing. They typically have a jog before the horses start with the first phase of the competition, the dressage. And then after the cross country and before the stadium jumping, they do a secondary jog and the horse has to be sound and healthy and deemed fit by the veterinarians to continue to compete. So eventing is broken into different levels. The beginner novice level is the lowest level. Then it goes into novice, training level, preliminary, intermediate, and then the highest level is advanced. So a big part of the thrill in eventing is cross country. Cross country course is approximately three to four miles long and has roughly about 30 solid obstacles. The obstacles are usually built to look more natural, um, but they do have a lot of times really cool themes to them, and they just definitely test the horse's bravery and the rider's accuracy. So these jumps are done over a span, um, like I said, three to four miles, and the horses typically gallop in between them. There's a time allowed on course, and the riders want to be within that time allowed. So for safety protection, the riders typically wear a helmet and a safety vest, as well as boots and your other typical riding gear. They also a lot of times wear a watch to keep track of time on course, so they can know, know whether their horse needs to speed up or slow down to be within that time allowed. The horse's legs are usually protected with boots. They often also use studs that screw into the horseshoes and that helps give them better traction. So it's almost like a pair of cleats at that point. Um, also, sometimes you might notice uh, in cross country on pictures or in video or what have you, you might notice some white stuff or stuff rubbed on the horse's legs or belly. And this is actually a grease that the riders apply to the horse to help the horse slide over a fence easier if they were accidentally not to jump it cleanly. So course designers consider a lot of things when they're designing a course for the horse's safety. So the primary focus on designing a course is the horse's safety. So the things the course designer wants to consider is something like the approach to the jump. Uh, the approach to the jump has a lot of impact on how the horse sees the fence and can safely navigate its way over the obstacle. So an uphill approach is typically considered easier as long as the horse has the opportunity to keep their speed and keep their uh, momentum going forward. A downhill approach is a little bit harder. It's more difficult for the horse as the rider needs to help maintain the balance. They also considered things like the turn to how the, how the rider and the horse are gonna get to the jump. So obviously they want to avoid some of the tight turns or blind turns, um, at, especially at the lower levels because they wanna give the horse a fair opportunity to make a clear and safe approach and, up and get up and over the jump safely. 
Other things that they do to consider in building a horse is the light and darkness. So for example, uh, the way the horse, way the jump is set up in proximity to how the sun sets maybe, um, or how the light falls on it. We don't want horses to have a false sense of lines based on shadows. Um, and same thing with the colors of the jumps. They want contrast to make sure that the horse is gonna see where they need to clear over.